I don't have anything like that. So the indicators, every single indicator, thousands of them out there, they can all of them be allocated into two types, lagging or leading. Don't force to know indicators by name. Know them by type. I'm emphasizing. Do not chase to know indicators by name. Learn to learn indicators by type. So if somebody says, do you know this indicator by name? Say, I may have forgotten the name. Is it a lagging indicator or is it a leading indicator? If the person you are talking to does not know, you are saying, my friend, thank you very much. If you don't know the type of your indicator, I can't even want to listen to you because you should be able to know the capability of every indicator, it is in its genetics. It is in its makeup. All indicators are made up of two genes, whether leading or whether lagging. So that person will be propagating an indicator which they do not know its capabilities. So the capabilities of indicators are coming from these two genes or this makeup. So moving average comes from the lagging indicator and many other indicators are on the leading indicator. When you go to your MT4, under trend on your MT4, you say insert the indicator. Those that appear under trend, they are all lagging indicators. And all that they appear under oscillators, they are all leading indicators. The difference between each one of them will be the extent at which they work or what you call sensitivity. The one that are most sensitive will be indicating earlier than the rest, indicating a downtrend or a, an uptrend or reversal. But they will show an early indication. The one that are less sensitive, they will then show an indication later. So that's exactly the difference. That's what I call it, where that says more like they are all belonging to the same family. The leading indicators, they are all belonging to the same family, all of them. So in this case, what's the difference is that within the leading indicators family, there could be others who are more forward than the rest. Others are more laid back and others are more forward. I mean, just think about the example of you, of, of having a family. In that family, there are parents and their kids. When somebody knocks at the door, you know there will be that person in the house who will be responding first more than anybody else. Others will be say, check first who it is. Another one will be rushing at the door to open. The person who rushes at the door to open is called most sensitive. And that's exactly what happens with indicators. The price moves. And one indicator will be rushing to us to tell you, yeah, yeah, it's going to be an uptrend. It's going to be an uptrend faster. That's exactly what we talk about. Another one will be saying, hey, I would rather reserve my comment. I'm still looking for more information before I can make a decision. Why am I telling you this? Because the majority of traders, according to my experience, they think that an indicator that indicates first is the best. They think that most sensitive indicators are the best. And that's what they were given. Because you like early indication, you think you're always right. The majority of indicators that are being formed and being sold on Facebook and on, on, on every social media are mainly leading indicators that are most sensitive. Why? Because traders don't want to wait long for signals. They don't want to wait long for indicators. The price passes by the street and the indicator make was made such that when the price passes by the street, the indicator will consider that movement of the footstep on the street like it was a knocking on the door of the house. Then the person goes by, but the street, but the market was just passing by. It was no one to do anything. So that's exactly what happens there. So they have made more sensitive indicators and then they will get indication way too early and people believed that those are the ones to go for. It's not true. So you need a combination, but I'll get to that. So lagging indicators, they are laid back. I call them adults. And leading indicators, they are more forward. By nature, they are giving the opinion of where the price will go. And I call that a youthful generation. They are not laid back at all. They believe they know everything. So a majority of novice traders, by the way, according to my experience, they look like oscillators for me because they just cannot wait to enter the market. I used to call them the Siabangenas. Anything they see, they want to enter. 
They go to the platform, they want entry. They go, they open everything. They just want to see themselves in the market. So in this case, they've got the capability of saying, I can't wait anymore. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm gonna be teaching you the better way. So that's exactly how about indicators. So the indicators that are most sensitive are the most attractive indicators. It's a similar thing like when you go to a retail store, every product that they've put at the front of the indicator is just for marketing purposes. It does not make it better. Do you agree with me? Yes, you do agree with me. If you go to pick and pay and check us, then you find some products that are put right at the entrance. It does not mean because it's at the entrance and when everybody comes see it first, then it means it's the best thing in the shop. It's not true, <laughs> but that's exactly what other people see. So when they see the first indicator that they were told about, they believe it's the best. It's not always true. So I hope that this has helped you tonight. So next is that moving averages. I'm not gonna go to all of them because I want us to talk about, I would like us to talk about the trading system. So that's the indicator. I want us to take to talk about the trading system for the next pretty much five minutes. And I hope uh, I had hoped that I will have some time with the money management, but I can rush it there. I have spoken about trading system and I'm not gonna stop. A trading system is the is something that will now will help you to identify trends, not candlesticks. Please, a trading system is something that needs to get you trends. Trends, you will need to be able to get the commandment number three, trends, not candlesticks, as early as possible. And then you must avoid, or it must help you to avoid false breakout. You agree with me that if you can get a true trend and that trend is a correct trend, the system that you have is gonna be a whoop whoop system. You know, it's a good system. And that's exactly what I'm telling traders. But a trading system is not an indicator. A trading system is a collection. It's a combination of, of indicators. That's what it is. So you cannot claim to have an a trading system if you are using one indicator. You cannot. Because we must put together more than one indicators. Then they must work and they must be efficient. That's what it is. Right, that's why. So in this case, the aim is to make sure that you are not caught into false breakouts, false signals, false trends, which the majority of breakout traders find themselves in. Even today, we were, we were helping some traders who are caught in trends where the false breakout happened. Now, a trader is caught with a false breakout. A false breakout is a whipsaw. We have had to be called to solve problems of traders who got trapped into the market because they had put their hand hoping that they are getting the money and the market had trapped them. They were ensnared. So the whole hand of the trader was in the market trying to buy in a seller's market and they were caught there. The whole account was locked into losses because they were trapped in a whipsaw. So whipsaws can be very costly for novice traders. I'm wanting you to avoid that. Do you want to avoid whip source? Then have a trading system. That trading system must not have a single indicator. That trading system must not just be about candles. Never. Right. It must be more than just candlesticks. All right. Because the market can produce a big candlestick, which we call the marubosus, the one used where the one you used to break out there is, uh, I'm, I'm just going to demonstrate this. I've seen this many times. Many, many people can be caught in candlesticks problems. The market is there. A bullish candle arises into the ranging market. There it is pushing up, breaking up. That's a bullish candle after several red, red candles. Right. There you go. I'm just going to give you an example. There is the red candle. So you rather, no, red must be down. Yeah, no, red candle and then blue one. Yeah, I think let me leave it like that. The market was going down. The blue, the, the, the green candle came. Then there is a breakout. Then they witness a breakout. Then they see this breakout. What do they do? Oh, you know what they will do, right? <laughs> They're all gonna have a buy. That's exactly what's gonna happen. 
they're going to get a buy. The next candle comes. The next candle comes. Back inside. This is the resistance. This is what we deal with. I'm telling you. I'm dealing with this daily. Coach, please, can you help me? My account is about to be blown. What's the problem? This is the problem. They bought there. The candle came back inside with the next candle. So the market is here. And the market continues. Let me show you the West. The market, con sorry. And the market continues. Another red candle. Watch this now. It gets worse. Another red candle. When it gets there, they sell here. I'm just showing you. Trader, hope, I think one of you have done something like this. <laughs> there is a sell. They've got a buy there. The buy did not go hit take profit. They are on a loss. The market come, came here. And now this is the support. That's the support. They say, rather, the, the, the support breaks. They sell. And they call it a hedge. After they sell, I'm just going to show you. Just Let me just bring it down to you. After doing that, the, the market goes back in again. Just going to show you. The market can do this for you. Or, or you can be whipsawed. Then from there, the market goes up again. If you have seen this thing, I can help you can. I want this green. Right, after you sold, they were sold there. The market comes again, back inside. Now you've got two trades. You see? The market can do anything. You see? There it is. When the market gets there, you've got two trades. A sell is in a loss, a buy is in a loss. By that time, your mind is going crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. This is what I call whipsaw. What you've just seen there, if you've gone through this, you have gone through a typical whipsaw. You are whipsawed. Two trades, none of them are on profit. You try to hedge. The next thing you have done, your account is in problems. Margin calls. The market then ranges between this top. I'm going to show you the West. Then the market ranges between this top you believe is getting better and this bottom. What does it mean? The market has corrected itself. Now this is the resistance, true resistance. It's here. And now the true support it's there. That's exactly how the market moves. You are caught in between problems. I think somebody uh, uh, is already responding to that. So that's exactly what happened with traders. And this is what I call, you know, if, you have, if you're going through this, the problem is not you. The problem is a trading system. If this happens most of the time, the trading system that you have is not helping you with objective number two. It is failing objective number two. It's called, it's failing the test. That system must be thrown out. It's not working. <laughs> it does not know how to identify trends. As such, it makes you to be caught up in trends. Then you need a new system. Okay, so that's how it goes. I thought I would speak about money management, but I think this one led me up to date. It's now five to eight. So in this instance, that's the objective. I may speak about money management perhaps most of the time next time because I've recorded this session. So just to complete it, is that for you to get a good, listen to this carefully, though it's gonna be on your video, for you to have a good trading system, for you to have a good trading system, yeah. Kinen, thank you so much, my buddy, for acknowledging while you're still in the group. He has acknowledged, he has been there many times. So that means the trading system is not where those are whipsaws. How do you avoid that? The first thing is that, how was the trading system developed? If the trading system is not developed in this manner, one of the things in your trading system is leaking. A good indicator-based trading system must tell you which indi this is a good which time frame to use. That's for those who are using indicator Tawai because indicators they indicate according to time frames. So if you are using an indicator-based trading system, you need this. And if you are using a trading system that use candlesticks like supply and demand, you need a time frame. Then two, in that time frame, you need to use that 
that you need to identify a trend, but what does it mean? You must get an indicator. Get an indicator that will get, get you a trend. Get another one, it must not be the same. Get, get another one, say another. So you must have another. If it must not be the same indicator, number two and number three can never be done by the same, by the same indicator. Not even by the indicator that you just change settings. If for instance, if you're using a moving average and you are using five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all those moving averages are just change settings. They belong to step number two. You need to go look for another indicator, not another setting of the same indicator. Go look for another makeup, another one which is independent from the, the rest. That one will become a confirmer. Define the risk, which is where I want to stay on next time and then define the entry and the exit. Why do traders make a loss? As I have always said, I once went to, to one of the companies that, uh, that were doing education and they, and they said, come and just do one session with our traders there. I went there and I saw hundreds of traders. It, in fact, it's like they knew I was gonna come. I think they were, got told, they were told that a coach, they called me Tsebza. Tsebza will be coming. And the room was filled with hundreds and hundreds of traders. There was no space for them to sit on. And I was taking them through this. And when I finished, they could not believe what they had because they said, we are hearing those things for the first time. Let me just tell you what happened. If you are a trader right now, and if your trading system firstly tell you to enter the market first, which is what, which is what happens. Some, 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 some trading systems, they have made this to be number one, this one, number two, step number two, this one, number three, this one, number four, this one, number five. What am I saying? They are saying, get me something that will make me enter the market. So entry is always number one. And the whole group in that class, they said, that's exactly what we were taught. They go to the market, enter the market. When they enter the market, now they, they are looking for exit. <laughs> because they can't find an exit, they go and check and exactly how much money am I losing if I don't exit. So in that case, they go backward. Now they go back and they check how much money am I losing? What is my risk in fact? Oh, you, you, you. And I only have got hundred dollars, eh? By the way, they're in the market. After they got in the market, now they remember they've got hundred dollars. They are in the trade. They are already running. Then they look at hundred dollars. They say, "Oh, oh, I've got hundred dollars, and already seventy dollars is gone." Guys, what do I do? Then they go and check the trend. Hey, let's go. Hey, is this an uptrend or a downtrend, guys? They say, "Hey, I also don't." Eh? Perhaps this. Now they are looking for the trend. Remember, the trade is running. They are looking for the trend while the trade is running. When they are looking for the trend, they said, but wait, but what time frame is this? Then they go to the time frame. Then they find the time frame. <laughs> Someone is laughing. Kinen, <laughs> when you do something like this, this is what I call, we make money this way. And we lose money this way, simple. So if you do it from down upward, it's like you have taken somebody, you have flipped somebody. The person is walking with, her, with the head and their feet is up. If you've got money in your pocket as a trader, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. You have flipped yourself. All the money that you have in your account will be given to the broker. This is the best way of donating your money. This one. If you want to donate your $100, start by step number five. Finish with step number one the results are obvious. If you want to avoid that, go for the first step. So this is how we make money. This is how we win. And this is how we lose. If you go this way, you win. If you go this way, you lose. The period. I've just told you now. That's exactly how it works. You will all, in fact, you'll always lose, not sometimes. So in this, in this case, 
you will have three out of 10 correct. Right, 30% accuracy. And this time you'll have seven out of 10. Our trading system, they can give up to seven, around seven up to 10. But that's how it works. So if you do work from entry and finding your way out, how did you get into a train if you don't know how it works? Even at least when you go there, they've written exit before you enter, you can see. So well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So I don't want to well, waste of your time. Yeah, I think it was a very interesting session. I can see the guys are loving it. So the Kenan is asking, coach, which indicators do we use for one time frame, identify trend and confirm the trend? Thank you, Kenan, again, because we are under questions right now. Remember, this first, before you can fill up the missing words, you must always understand the template. This template can work for every single trading system. So in this case, you add, you can add and remove indicators. I'm, I'm repeating, you can add and repeat indicators. So one thing that does not change is your template. Indicator in. When you do another trading system, indicator out, put another one. So then we'll be having different indicators came in. So in this instance, we will say which trading system, we have got more than one trading system, it's not only one. Here at Opulus FX, we've got three indicator-based trading system, not one. So the question will be, which one uses what? So when you put an, a, a, an indicator at two, another one at three, you are forming a specific trading system. Another one can have their own trading system for as long as the template is the same. So at Opulus FX, we do not change templates we change indicators to develop different systems. So we don't have, so I'm not gonna answer you tonight. And I'm gonna say when you attend intermediate, you are learning a trade, a specific trading system. We take specific indicators, we give them specific roles. Then we can decide, and then we've got rules of entry and rules of exit after. We go to another system. We take indicators, whatever they are, we give them specific roles. So these are called roles of indicators, number two and three. They are not. So the role is not defined by a person. When you are going to a company to work, you are already finding your position ready for you. You are not coming to define it. All when you go there as Kinen, we say, Kinen, you are coming into this company. Your role is to do auditing. Even if you're an accountant, you cannot say, I'm here, I'm an accountant. I'm not gonna do anything except accounting. No, 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 you can't tell us here. You are here in a company. So a trader cannot be told by an indicator what to do in opulence effect. So you learn a system. An indicator is subjected to a system and a system must be subjected to the user. That's how it is. So you are the user of the system. The system is developed. That's how it is. So indicators don't tell us what to do. We put them in their roles and then we say, you identify the trend. If you don't do your job, you are out. You confirm the trend. If you don't do your job, you are out. That's how it works. <laughs> so at intermediate level, we start dealing with indicator-based trading systems. Then at advanced level, we deal with advanced trading system. All of them, they've got a template. The template is the same. Go to time frame look for any of the indicators, look for another one that can confirm. Then from there, define the risk. So the risk of the trader depends on the type of step number two and three, not number five. So your risk depends on step number two. Depending on the formation of your indicators, you can determine the risk. Same thing, let's go to sports. Depending on the players that you have fielded for that game, you can be, you, you, now you can bet. Think about if you bet every time that Manchester City will always win their game. It's not true. Though Manchester City can win all their games, this time they have fielded a D, a D team against an A team of Man United, Man United. So if you are betting like that, you're going to have a problem. So I want the team to be listed first. So your team list are your indicators. So I, and then your risk is who are you investing in? If I see that this premium team is playing a D division, 
against an A club. I'm not going to risk you all my money. I don't need entry and exit to tell me. I may even choose not to enter that market because the risk is high. I hope you guys are catching me and I hope you understand. This is the basics of a good, solid foundation for a trader who wants to trade sustainably. Because of time, uh, let me leave it here.